this is what makes me feel good. I'm a I'm a man on the street kind of guy. I like to listen to what people are talking about, what people are saying, and I usually I'm kind of I'm not gonna say to myself because now I walk in the gym and I was like Dave, and I'm like hey, but usually I I don't you know say a lot, just kind of get my workout in so I can get in, get out, and um, because I have a, a technical analysis tattoo, people notice it, and then that sparks up conversations. But anyway, again, I'm kind of a man of street kind of guy, and it, it it's good to talk to people and realize that technical analysis is alive and well. So let me show you where I'm going with this. So I have a friend from the gym. Let's let's call him let's call him Don, um, and let's just Don Erickson, okay? And um, he doesn't really look like this. He's he's a little older and um, he's more gray, and he's a few pounds heavier. But um, Don Erickson, just let's just call him that. He's um, he's from Covington. He lives on uh, 115 Smith Lane. You you go to downtown Covington, right off Columbia Street. His little subdivision over there. But anyway, this hypothetical Don, right? But anyway, he told me that he was in the Russell 2000, and a few months back, he said he's going to get out of break even. And every day I go to gym when when it begins to rally, he starts talking about it. He would sell it off. He's like, oh, it's selling off. And I told him, and he's familiar with the TFM 10% system because he watched a little bit of my stuff. And I told him, look, don't don't look to get out at break even. You don't want to sell as it's going up. Sell when it's going down, okay, to get your capital out of harm's way. But as long as it's going up, stick with it. And he told me a couple of weeks back, he goes, I was finally at break even a couple of weeks ago. And you could tell, I could tell by the way he was telling me that he was kind of like, damn, I should have sold while I had the chance. Now, the reason I'm saying technical analysis is alive and well is that's how a double top works in markets, okay? People looking to sell at break even. Livermore talks a lot about how people sell stocks. People in general, and I tripped up on this a few weeks ago, but people in general don't sell stocks when they're dropping. They sell them on the way up. And that, that kind of dovetails in with the hope and the fear type of things. The, 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 the novice, the non-trader type tends to flip hope and fear. They fear that their position is going, their profits are going to evaporate, and then they hope their loss doesn't get any bigger. And that, that creates kind of a, uh, inversion or the opposite, so to speak, of what you should do. You should be a good little trend following moron and follow that trend higher, as opposed to looking to get out of break even. Trading for break even is not a good strategy. Anyway, so I'm guessing that was right around that time. Like I said, a few weeks ago, he told me that he was finally back to break even. And then he he was saying this with regret. It was break even a few years, a few weeks before he was telling me. But anyway, so he told me on the 14th, a couple of days ago, and I think it was actually on the 15th, it was Tuesday. He goes, I, I got out of Russell at break even. And he was kind of proud of himself. And I'm like, why did you do that? <laughs> now, the old me used to sort of coddle people and say, oh, okay, well, whatever. And the new me, because I get I get sick of people hounding me for what to do, so I just tell them. It's like, don't sell on the way up, okay? Sell on the way down, but don't sell on the way up. So him selling this has nothing to do with the actual market, if you think about it. It has nothing to do with the PE, whatever that is, of the of the Russell 2000 stocks. It has nothing to do with the situation in Nigeria. I was going to say the situation in Israel, but the situation in Nigeria is even more important, right? So this just tells me technical analysis is alive and well. Why did he sell? He sold because he got out of break even, because he bought in at a high level, and he kind of felt like, boy, I'll never do that again. Well, the problem with that is, if that's your strategy, is one, you'll never make any money, and two, you might even have this thing drop and drop and drop and drop and drop, and 10 years from now, 
when it's 50% lower, and, and you're probably like, oh, Dave, an index will never do that. Yes, it will. The S&P, as I just said, made 13-year lows, I think it was in 2008. And, and believe it or not, and, and people will argue with me over this, and I just no longer bring it up. <laughs> if I'm at a cocktail party, I'd rather just have a drink and be left alone as far as the markets are concerned. But I'll tell them things like the market could go 25 years or more without making a new high. And people do not believe me. Now, I did see someone a while back said the market is never going 30 years without making a new high. I was like, okay, well, you got me there. And by the way, as Greg Morris points out, the buy and hold metrics are based on an 81-year time horizon. And as Sweet Brown says, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> anyway, so that was not Don Erickson. I just made up his name. But uh, so Don sold out. So I'm going to beat up Don whenever I see him. <laughs> Brian says that break even, you can make it up in volume. Yeah. <laughs> Sell everything for a loss and make it up in volume. 